Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations in all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture passage today is from Exodus chapter 20. We are continuing through the story, which is the Bible in novel form. Uh, each chapter we go each week, and so here we are in chapter 5, and it finds us at the 10 commandments. So I invite you with open ears and a soft heart to listen as God speaks to us through God's word. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day for the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. Your son, you, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There are a lot of laws. There are a lot of laws in Baldwin, West County, St. Louis, the city, the state, national laws, international laws. There are a lot of laws that we have with the groups we are a part of, laws with the Rotary, laws at school, different rules. Now, Scout Sunday, there are 12 points to the Scout law. If you know it, if you don't, just say watermelon or just mouth it. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, reverent. Awesome. Awesome. I, I have notes, so, so you guys even did even better. Because part of it is, you might not know it, but you keep doing it. You keep repeating it until you get it with your brain, and then hopefully you get it with your heart, and then your feet follow your hands continue to do that. I've heard it asked, what is the difference between a good lawyer and a great lawyer? Anybody know? A good lawyer knows the law. A great lawyer knows the judge. A good lawyer knows the law. A great lawyer knows the judge. Well, this is the question as we go to the Ten Commandments. It's one thing to know the law. It's one thing to know these Ten Commandments. It's something else entirely and something even better to know the eternal judge, the creator, God. MP was already talking a little bit about rules. We see rules on Super Bowl Sunday. We see it for football. Five-yard penalties, 10-yard penalties, 15-yard, 25-yard, spa the foul. Folks can get ejected if it's 
particularly egregious. If you're unsure, you go to the monitors. There are rules. There are rules. And the reason we have these rules is to make sure it's an even playing field, to make sure that no one side has an advantage unfair over the other. And the other is to make sure that everybody is safe. There are rules that you might not know at first, but the more you watch, the more you play, the more you participate, the more the rules start to make sense. They, they become a part of you. Now, I'm going to talk about my driving test here in, in a minute, but some, maybe someday we're down the line, I will talk about my, my first time at a school dance, junior high school. I'm not going to share the whole story. It, it's very difficult for me to go back to those those moments, the uh, PTSD is real. But what I will tell you is I learned how to dance by, thank God I could count to four, right? It's one, two, three, four. And eventually you do that enough and you're dancing, kind of. But you're dancing, you're moving, you l- count, you learn the numbers. If you learn to play piano, you learn to work on a typewriter, you learn where to put your hands. And eventually you do it enough times that you don't even think about it. You know the rules in your fingers will dance the place. Otherwise, you're simply going to be a hunt and peck typist for the rest of your life. This is what is the point of the law. You might not know the law, but you have to repeat repeat it enough times. You have to learn it and work on it enough times. Eventually, it becomes a part of you. Now, the law can do a lot of things. The law can show you what is right, what is wrong. Road signs and, and, and other laws can show you what the right thing to do is. But the law can't do one thing, and the law can't forgive you. The law can only point out where you have broken the law. It cannot give you a better path forward. So I promised a, uh, I promised a little revel- revelation about my life, about my driving test. I know you're all on the edge of your seats to hear this story. And, and so I, the reason I bring it up is because many of you have come up to me and, and have noticed our, our old uh, Toyota Santa van. And on the back of our old Toyota Santa van, we have something that's terrifying that's on the back. Do you know what I'm talking about? Permit driver. Uh, that's on there. Now, she's doing a great job. Everyone look at Amelia. Now look back. Now leave her alone. Uh, They tell you not to do this to your kids, but eh, that's all right. Um, And so you have this, and the thing is, so I'm in the car singing, Nearer My God to Thee, and, and because I've got 30 years of experience. I've got 30 years of experience driving, so I'm feeling, well, I know it. I didn't know it when I started. It's very easy to forget where I was at 30 years ago, where we were at 30 years ago, once you know the rules. So I went down to downtown Springfield to take the driving test, and, and I went and did the road sign test. They still do that. It was great, 100%. Took the written test, 100%. They then got you in the car to take the driving test, and on the driving test, well, I got 100% on the written test. And it turns out, I did not know this, but if you speed, it's an automatic fail. And so I I learned that, but there were no signs that were posted. There was no signs in downtown Springfield that said 20 miles per hour. Everyone was driving 35 miles an hour. And I tried to explain that to my instructor. And how do you think that worked? How does it work when you get pulled over by a police officer and and you say, well, I didn't know what the speed limit was. They say, oh, in that case, here's a warning. No. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse for breaking it. This is why it was a gift for the Israelites to have the Ten Commandments. Because you can be breaking the law and you can be completely oblivious to it. The fact you have the law literally written in stone telling you what is right and what is wrong is a gift from God. And MP was right. A lot of times we hear about rules. And some of you are rules followers. Some of you are are rules are meant to be broken. I get that. Rules are good. They provide order out of the chaos. They provide order out of the chaos. And so we have the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. We have that first tablet and the second tablet. It's not five and five. It's actually four and six on that. The first four are about our relationship with God. It says, have no other gods before me. Uh, Honor the Sabbath. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Don't have any idols. The first four. The next six are how we deal with each other. Honor your mother and father. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't lie. 
Mark Twain once said, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. It's like kind of like that, like live a life, like get in the practice of doing things the right way. But these things are good. They're from God. And how many of us have violated one or all? The Israelites, within the first couple days, they violate the first two because Moses is gone for six weeks. They couldn't, even, they couldn't even wait that long to get their sin on. And yet, and yet, in our own lives, we break God's law every day. The law is good, but the law can only convict us. And some folks are just stuck in the law, and that's all they can be. And they feel that the world, the guilt has come crushing down on them. This is all I am. I'm broken. The depth of my despair, the depth of my sin is the only thing that defines me. And that's, that's not a place that God wants you to remain. Because we've got the law, but we also have this wonderful thing called grace. And grace says, I love you no matter what. Grace does not negate the law. God's love does not negate the law. It fulfills the law. The law simply says, this is how deep your well is. And grace says, I'm going to overflow it with my love. I'm going to overflow it. So, so we don't do the law to get God to love us. We don't do the law to get God to love us. We do the law because God already loves us. It is to say what we're told in the Protestant Reformation, what Martin Luther talked about, what the Protestant Reformers talked about. We are saved both from the law and we are saved for the law. We are free from the law and free for it. We, are, we don't have to do the law to get God to love us. We do the law because God already loves us wholly and completely. And this is a love that will not let us go. Now, the scout law, they're talking about those 12 points. The Ten Commandments, we've got 10. I'm not going to ask you to memorize them, but please memorize them. They're kind of important. But how do you remember? How do you remember these or maybe them in order and and I found a, a great illustration, a great way of defining this comes from a book called The Kite Runner. Anybody read The Kite Runner maybe 10, 15 years ago when it came out? And it's about, it's about a family in Afghanistan, a Muslim family. And the author is talking about his relationship with his dad. And his dad, I think, gives the best definition of how best to understand God's commands says, now no matter what the mullah teaches, there is only one sin, there is only one, and that is theft. And every other sin is a variation of theft. Do you understand that? When you kill a man, you steal a life, Baba said. You steal his wife's right to a husband. You rob his children of a father. When you tell a lie, you steal someone else's right to the truth. When you cheat, you steal the right to fairness. Do you see? It might be just enough to look out and say what God's commands are. It means I'm not supposed to take something from you that isn't mine. And I'm not supposed to take something from, from God that isn't mine. I'm not supposed to steal. I'm not supposed to take these things away. These laws are good because they benefit us individually and collectively. But it's more than that. It's not just that we are to follow the law. We are to do it with joy. And we hear the law and we don't think joy automatically coming in because we normally think about being on the wrong side of it or about making mistakes. You rarely sing hallelujah when you see flashing lights in your rearview mirror. You know, generally your heart races and and, and maybe you're saying Sunday morning language, maybe you're not, but you're, you're worried about that. But the reason we rejoice in the law is that it keeps us from chaos. It keeps us from harming our neighbors. It keeps us from taking what isn't ours. We all have sin. We all can look at those commandments and know that we have broken them. From stealing someone else's right to the truth to coveting, which is so natural. In fact, our whole economy is built on it. All these things, all the idols that we fashion and form and worship around us, not necessarily golden calves, but 
we all have our idols. We, the law tells us this is how deep your sin is. And the law is good. But Jesus said, I came to fulfill the law. I came that you might have life and you might have it abundantly. I have come to pour out grace into that vacuum of your sin. The question is, will we see the law as good and for us? And do we do the law to get God to love us? If we do that, then we have missed the point of this whole exercise called life. We follow the law because God has already loved us. God has already redeemed us. God has already seen us at our worst and says, I choose you. I choose you this day and for eternity. We follow the law because we are thankful. So may we be thankful, brothers and sisters. May we know that freedom comes when not only when we obey that law, but when we live out the law in joy. A good life knows the law. A great life knows the judge eternal. In the name of the Father, of the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.